What's up everybody, Ian and Ben here. I'm gonna take you through some hamstring work using the wall. This is something that we're gonna go over in our workshop, something that you see in all of our programs. It's just a huge part of what we do. First thing that we're gonna do is gonna be a hook line, or a, a cross connect. So what we're gonna have him do is he's gonna put his heel on the wall, his whole entire foot, and then he's gonna slide it down. So we have this perfect little um, kind of border here. And I like how that gives him the heel contact, but I want his whole entire foot on the wall. It's very important. His knee is gonna be bent, not locked, but it doesn't have to be crazy bent. You see he's at a perfect angle right now. If you didn't have that border, simply put a foam roller, a yoga block, something under, just so that they have that contact of, oh, I need to pull down into this. Feedback, constraints, huge part of what we do. Now, we're gonna turn this one, just starting off here, into that cross connect to really open up some range of motion. So what I want him to do is bring this hip to 90 degrees. He's gonna make sure it stays in line. A lot of people that are missing hip IR are gonna look like this. So be very conscious of those details looking from this view that you have that nice inline angle. Now he's gonna take this arm straight up to the ceiling and maybe just a little bit across. It's really easy to overdo this part and tuck your chin. So untuck your chin, keep that airway open and give me this nice reach here. You can think about getting your elbow forward but you can also keep a little bit more of this back. Can you bring your ribs back into me? Yep, yep, yep. So there's that happy medium between those where you're not just completely rolling off of the ground, but you're able to reach and keep your ribs back. That's gonna put the shoulder blade on the rib cage and give you a nice good feeling there. Now this toe is completely straight up. We're really pushing big toe in and we're pulling heel down. Other little thing that I really like over there is I like to cue them to take that middle finger as far away from me as possible so it's like he's getting length here. I don't want him to do it so that his whole spine goes, but I do want him to open that up and try to get that shoulder abduction on the left side that from PRI we know, and even just if you've done a lot of assessments, you'll see a lot of people are missing that. So putting him in this position, chin untucked, super relaxed inhale through their nose, let everything expand, let the position do the work, don't even need to tell you where to breathe. Exhale, keep this knee unlocked like it is, push through the wall and drag down at the same time. We're getting hamstring, we're getting expansion through the ribs, we're improving hip IR here in a lot of ways, opening up the back side of the left side of the pelvis, getting them that good sensation of the right arch so that they can get off of the right side and get to the left. We're opening up the back side here on the right. We're also going to get a really good opening on the front of the left, technically the front and the back of the left if you go that way and don't pull back into the ground. So it's opening both sides. Again, very important. Mouth is sealed on your inhales, tongue is relaxed, jaws relaxed. Try not to recede it back, try not to tuck it down. If you cue your client, your athlete, eyes up to the ceiling, a lot of that stuff will take care of itself, but most people are gonna still tuck. I like this for a good five to, five to six breaths for maybe two to four sets, or you could just do 60 seconds, two sets, one set, really good thing to start off your warm up with. You'll notice if you want to test hip IR, shoulder IR before, that you might see some changes in that as well. So from there, what I want to take you through is another progression that we're going to go through that's going to be a little bit of a different goal. What we're going to have Ben do is slide a little bit closer to it and we're going to have him lift his foot up a little bit higher. Let's say that your heel is going to be yeah, right about there. Good. So now same idea, except he's going to grab this. Shout out to David Gray, huge inspiration for this little part of the series. I love it. Use this with everybody. A lot of people need to work on this essentially getting your calf and your hamstring to work together. So same thing with the chin, untucked, you're doing a beautiful job of that. Start off by pulling the heel down, start off by feeling the ball of the foot. So you're pressing toes into the wall, feeling everything there. Same idea here, I would like this knee to be in line with this foot, everything's locked in. And now what he's gonna do is as he's pulling down, we're gonna give a little bit more attention to actually tucking the butt under and lifting the hips a little bit off of the ground. I love this because it's so scalable. Depending on what your goal is, you could have him keep the hips down. I love cueing the tag of the Lululemon or your boxer staying down. So that way we can take care of that as someone who's a little bit more extended. Someone who wants to work a little bit more towards sprinting and allowing the hip to get a little bit higher, getting a little bit more hip extension can be also really great, which is what we're doing now. And then to make this even better and a little bit more load on the calf, we're gonna lift a piece of paper under the heel. So it's just a smidge, a little bit less than that right there. So it's heels not on there. Think it's almost like the middle of his foot and the ball of his foot even more so are really on the wall. He's consistently pulling down the whole time. So this hamstring is getting smoked. You will be surprised how hard this actually is. 
what I'll often do with clients is 20 seconds with the heel on the, on the wall, 20 seconds with the heel off of the wall, and then 20 seconds at the top of the calf raise. So let's go ahead and get your heel all the way up as high as you can without losing the first and fifth metatarsal. This is something that we talk about a lot in our workshop. Very important to get people to understand this so it's not rolling in or out. And now he's got a lot more calf, really kicking this on. Try to do your best to keep your calf pushing through the wall as you pull your foot down. There it goes, even better, good. Holding on to that, pulling down the whole time. There's your 20 seconds. A lot of people are gonna get a little bit, I like that, in line, good. And you can even think, if I'm higher, I might cue him to get his heel away, because this is that part of the phase of gait where he's gonna resupinate. So his heel going and turning out a little bit there could be really great. Get a little bit more cab there. Now, he's already held for way too long, but that's okay. You're gonna go heel all the way to the wall under control and then you're gonna go calf raise up. And this is where I don't wanna see anything change at the hips. I just want the ankle to be what's changing. If his hips drop, you know he lost his hamstring. And I also wanna see that a lot of people are gonna struggle with this. This is one of those things that anybody, athletes, anything can do, but it's also a really great early on kind of transition towards plyometrics, towards pogos. Getting someone really good at this can be a really great way to ensure that they're gonna have more success when they start jumping. Because what we're looking at here is this slow, controlled heel to the wall is essentially an eccentric. So we're really controlling that. You're going to see some people that have had histories of injuries, ankle sprains, things like that, get really wonky here, and they'll have no control as they go down. They'll lock the knee out instead of staying in the hamstring. They'll drop the hips. This is very difficult for a lot of people. And it's just a safe way to really load the calf and the hamstring together and have that direct carryover to our sprinting, to our running, to our jumping. And it can be used as a warm up on those days for those athletes that are already doing it, already jumping, already running, and you just wanna get quote unquote an activation sequence going. You will feel this. If I wanted to make it even harder, maybe I get his hips even higher, maybe I get him to lift even higher endless options. Please let me know if you have any questions about this. Definitely try it out for yourself. Try it out with someone. You can come down and relax. I like, again, 20 seconds heel, 20 seconds floating heel, 20 seconds top of the calf raise, 10 reps. If you can get through that, you're doing pretty well. It's probably a good two minute set. Then you're ready to go for your running. You want to do two sets. That's also awesome. Definitely something we're going over at our upcoming workshops. Link in the bio, link below. Check it out. Let us know if you have any questions and we hope to see you there.